Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Cruising with Phil. Today we're going to give a news update for this fall 2022, so let's get started. All right, first in today's update, or news update, is some news of the weird. Apparently there's a lawyer in Florida who has been fighting motorcycle helmet laws. Uh, basically, he has been pushing for more lenient laws in the sense of not requiring people to wear motorcycle helmets. Unfortunately, and ironically, Ron was killed in a motorcycle accident recently. Both he and his girlfriend were on a motorcycle. Both he and his girlfriend were killed, actually, in a motorcycle accident. He came up on some congestion while riding, some good congested traffic while riding his motorcycle, had to slow down quickly, lost control of the bike, and uh, I don't know the full details and don't really want to know the full details, but uh, what has come out uh, in the media is that both he and his girlfriend were killed due to head, inju head injuries, which unfortunately would have been avoided had they been wearing helmets. So it's never a good thing when another rider is killed, but we need to be smart about this, guys, and wear our protective gear. All right, that's all I'm going to say about that. Okay, so on to other news. Harley Davidson is apparently in a class action lawsuit. Now, if you've followed any news with Harley, then you probably know that in the summer they faced a, a lawsuit against the FTC where the FTC basically uh, came to them and said that their wording in their warranty uh warranty documentation for new bikes basically gave the impression that if a bike owner goes to a third party shop or puts on third party parts on their bike while it's under warranty it will actually void the warranty and this of course kind of goes against the laws against fair competition and stuff like that um, so the FTC won that uh, the uh, Harley Davidson agreed to change whatever they needed to change uh, to you know, avoid this problem. Well, now there's a couple of guys, um, I think one in California, one in Minnesota, who are starting class action lawsuits against Harley asking for reimbursement or for whatever, repair, whatever you want to call it, uh, monetary, whatever. Um, because of having to go to Harley and pay Harley prices for service and parts on their bikes that were under warranty because they were under the impression they had to do that instead of going to a less expensive third-party shop. So now they are starting class action lawsuits to get uh, reimbursement money from Harley Davidson. So no news yet as far as I've heard on what the results of that is, uh, what Harley's going to do with that. I'm not sure how much we will hear unless you're part of the class action lawsuit. But anyway, that's going. That's what's going on there. And I'm not sure how I feel about this. It's kind of a unique scenario or, or interesting scenario. We all know that, that Harley parts and services, anything with the Harley Davidson name on it, you're going to pay a premium for. Um, so in one sense you should go into it with that knowledge that you buy a harley or anything that has the harley name on it you're going to pay a premium that's just the way it is um but at the same time how a harley handles warranty claims for a bike that's been worked on at a third party shop or or has third party parts on it is kind of a challenging thing to figure out how to handle where to draw that line because who knows whether or not the third-party parts that were put on that were put on there help to cause the the breakdown that's supposed to be under warranty. So that's a difficult situation. I don't think there's an easy answer to that one, but it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. 
All right, and on other news related to li- to Harley, um, anybody who's been around the motorcycle world knows that Harley started the electric motorcycle called the Livewire, and it hasn't sold real well. Uh, it's kind of got fairly weak uh, performance. Um, as from what I hear, it only gets 70 miles uh, range on the highway before it has to be charged again. So, you know, it, it hasn't, hasn't done real well as far as sales. Harley ended up actually selling it off to, um, or subsidizing it or whatever you want to call it, to a investment company, as I understand. It's now publicly traded, uh, ind- independent motorcycle company called Livewire. And the investments, uh, the investment buy-in has not been great for it. It's not been doing real well. Um, so when reporters asked uh, Harley CEO Zeitz how he feels about that, he basically compared it to Tesla and said that in the same way that it took a long time for Tesla sales to take off and whatnot, um, but now is, is doing quite well, he thinks that Harley, or sorry, Livewire is going to do the same thing uh, in the sense that it'll, it'll be a little slow to ramp up, but it will eventually ramp up. So on the note of electric uh, cars and, and whatnot, I don't know when it happened, but the UK passed a ruling of some kind that all vehicles, uh, motorcycles, cars, and vans, starting in the year 2035, will have to be zero emissions. No more internal combustion engines that cause emissions. And that's for all new vehicles starting at that point. And it's kind of an interesting idea. It's only 12 years away since 2023 vehicles are already coming out or on the lots in, in some, some scenarios. Um, I don't know how I feel about that either. I don't know that that's realistic, but uh, that's what they're putting out. And I don't know how much that affects us here. Obviously, that ruling doesn't affect uh, vehicles being sold in the States, but it'll be interesting to see how much this this uh, push for electric vehicles is going to is going to uh, come here to the states as well and of course we've seen a huge rise in sales for for electric cars uh, in the past year or two but in that in that uh, as a result of that ruling in in the UK uh, Kawasaki and Toyota are currently uh, teaming up together and, and possibly I think a couple other manufacturers as well like Yamaha might be in there as well are teaming up together to work on developing a hydrogen based engine for motorcycles now I know there's already a company that's developing hydrogen based engine for cars and they actually have some out on the road I don't know how many I don't think it's very many but um, that's already a process that's starting uh, it'll be interesting to see what that turns out, what kind of power, what kind of range a hydrogen-based engine gets. I don't know. I'm not a mechanic. I don't know how that kind of thing works. But it'll be interesting to see what happens there. Royal Enfield has been growing by leaps and bounds recently. Um, that's primarily European-based uh, growth. Um, they, they were a fairly... Uh, kind of low-grade motorcycle at one point, but something changed, and they've been coming out with new models and gaining a whole lot of popularity. It'll be interesting to see what happens there as well. Um, They are apparently uh, coming out with their first electric motorcycle uh, in the next uh, few months, as well as uh, so is Kawasaki, I think, coming out with an electric motorcycle. So, of course, electric, electric, electric uh, engines is really uh, gaining a whole lot of traction uh, around the world. And uh, reviews here in the States for those of us who, you know, we here are, are tend to be power hungry. Uh, we like our bikes big and we like them powerful and fast and, and whatnot. And um, electric motorcycles just don't meet up to those kinds of specs that we're used to here in the States yet. So, but it'll be, 
it'll be, uh, you know, we're going to, I'm going to check on news every now and then and see if there's any major updates or whatever. Uh, so stick around. Thanks for watching. That's all I have for uh, major news. Um, there are some other small things going on. I think I saw some things about uh, KTM and MV Agusta uh, kind of um, joining up together in terms of dealerships and distribution, stuff like that. I think, again, that's more European or Asian. I'm not sure how much that affects us here. So anyway, um, but that's about all I have for now as far as motorcycle news. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you all. Have a good one. Later.